Mediterranean. The island of Antikythera may be located between the islands of Kythera and Crete at the commencement of the Aegean Sea. Yet, apart from about 14 humans and 500 goats, it has more surprises than one may think. Please welcome Chris with his speech, The Loneliest Man in the World and the Mechanism. Good morning, everybody. I've always been, I've always been told to shout because none of you can hear me about halfway down. But I'm going to begin, uh, dear guests and dear Toastmasters, with a question. Have any of you ever been lonely? Hands up. Hands up, those who have been lonely. <coughs> lonely is a significant problem. It appears many times in songs, Beatles song, sang about loneliness. The Elvis Presley sang, Only the Lonely. And I want to tell you basically that there are many people who are far more lonely than you've ever been. And I'm going to describe one of them. So I'm going to put you back into Antikythera, which is a tiny little island about five miles across in the middle of the Aegean Sea. And it contains exactly 12 people, mainly in winter, 500 goats, and at the very far end of the island, only reachable by sea, is a lighthouse. A singular lighthouse that's 45 meters high and cast a beam 25 miles across the ocean. And there, curiously, came one gentleman by the name of Nikolao Filosofov, who was a Russian who was an admiral in the Imperial Navy in Russia. And in around about the time of the Bolshevik Revolution, they stripped him of all his titles. He became a Greek, and as a Greek, they made him keeper of the lighthouses. So this Nikolao Filosofov basically set up in this singular lighthouse, no wife, no children, on his own, and for 17 years, he lived alone in the lighthouse. Now, do you think that's lonely? Yeah, you, best, you better believe it is. Now, at the other end of the island, at the other northern end, five miles away, in 1907, divers from Simi, were, sponge divers, were looking for stuff on the ocean bed. And they were looking to integrate some of their more modern diving techniques enabling them to go deeper and deeper. And on this particular day, 1907, they discovered a mass of coagulated bronze. And the coagulated bronze basically brought to the surface, revealed itself as a package of gears. Around about 150 BC, this period of time, somebody made a computer, the very first computer in the world, 1,500 years before anybody else ever attempted a, a computer. It's a, a difficult thing to try to imagine, but it looks like a block of a green mass, but on this side, this is a, a reconstruction of the way in which modern people believe it worked. And it was basically designed by who? Another extremely lonely man by the name of Hipparchus. Hipparchus was a Greek astronomer and Hipparchus worked out all, that, all those years ago, 150 BC, he worked out the way in which all the gears could tell the revolutions of the Earth around the Sun. Hey, Galileo, surprise, surprise. He worked out the uh, occultation, the eclipses, the fact that the moon spun 
once every uh, uh, every month, uh, and so on and so forth. And that is all represented in this machine mechanism that you will today find in Athens, in the Archaeological Museum of Athens. So Hipparchus probably worked on his own, was unable to talk about this with anybody, was a desperately lonely man, but also a genius insofar that he was contributing to the very first computer of the world. Dear old philosopher eventually died. This is the gentleman, had a Russian moustache. And he died approximately 1,800 years later than the death of Hipparchus. So Lodge, when you come to think about being lonely on your own, think about at least two more people who were living over there on the little island, island of Antikythera. Think about them and think basically, hey, I'm a lot better off than they are. <laughs> Thank you.